The most widely used item when constructing a scene in most 3D modeling packages is the mesh. And the most fundamental part of a mesh is the vertex. A vertex is simply a single point in 3D space. Two vertices can be joined by an edge. Three or more edges can join together to create a face. Notice that a vertex or edge can be shared by two or more faces. A face with three edges is referred to as a tri, short for triangle. A four-edged face is called a quad, short for quadrilateral, and a face with more than four edges is known as an n-gon, short for n-sided polygon. Note that this term is sometimes hyphenated. Every face has two sides. One side is known as the front face, the other the back face. Normally, back faces will be hidden from view but under certain circumstances they may become visible. For example, looking at a sphere which is constructed from many faces, only the front faces are visible, the back faces all being on the inside of the sphere. However, if we remove a few faces, some back faces can now be seen. Another feature of every face is a set of normals. A normal is an invisible line connected to a face and is used by the modeling package to determine which part of the face is the front face. Normals are also used to help create accurate shading on the surface of an object. There are two types of normals in Blender. The first is the face normal, which is perpendicular to its face and is positioned at the center of that face. The vertex normal appears at every vertex of a face, and is perpendicular to the two edges that meet at that vertex. Where more than one face shares a vertex, then there will be a vertex normal for each edge pair. Normally, we will begin modeling by creating one of the basic shapes available in Blender. These are known as mesh primitives. Typical mesh primitives are shapes such as the plane, cube, circle, UV sphere, ecosphere, cylinder, cone, and torus. Notice that a U-sphere is created from quad faces for the most part while an ecosphere is created from tries. When creating a mesh with a curved surface, the more faces the mesh contains, the more convincing the curve becomes. However, we can create a smoother look to a curved surface by adjusting the shading. While modeling, we have an option to add a color to a mesh's surface. This color will not appear in the final rendered result and is used instead to give a clearer picture of an object while we adjust its shape. There are many methods of changing a mesh into the shape we desire. We can move, rotate, or scale the complete object. When scaling we can change the size in one, two, or all three dimensions. For even greater control we can select only part of an object then, move, rotate, or scale just those elements. We can even treat a mesh like a lump of clay and sculpt it into the shape we require. Another way to create the final shape we want is to join two or more objects together. To make a mesh shape appear more like a real-world object when finally rendered, we can add a material to its surface. This allows us to not only specify a color, but also affect its shininess and transparency. Taking things one step further, we can copy an image onto the surface of our shape to add even more realism. For example, with the correct image we can make our object appear to be made of wood, stone, or any other real-world material. An additional image known as a normal map can be overlaid on an object's surface to give the illusion of roughness without the need to add more faces to an object's mesh. Alternatively, we can use a displacement map image to add actual roughness to a surface but this option does increase the number of faces. Since the images we place on a mesh's surface are two-dimensional, and our mesh three-dimensional, we may have to spend time defining which part of the image is assigned to each face of the mesh. This is known as UV mapping. Another important part of creating a 3D scene is the lighting. Just like in a movie, the lighting of a scene can enhance the overall effect and atmosphere. The most basic lighting is ambient lighting. Ambient lighting is a light which appears equally in all directions. This means that every part of an object is lit equally and there are no shadows. 
The closest we are likely to come to ambient lighting in the real world is the effect created on a foggy, overcast day. Blender offers four other types of lighting. A point light is similar to a bare bulb in a ceiling. Light spreads equally in all directions and becomes less bright the further away we are from the source. A spotlight throws a cone of light in a specific direction. Again its brightness diminishes over distance. Sunlight, which is sometimes called directional light, casts parallel rays of light from a specified direction. Its brightness is unaffected by distance. An area light can be likened to a panel light. Its brightness diminishes over distance but, since the light does not originate from a single point, the shadows it casts are less sharp. When we are working on a project, we might normally view our scene in perspective mode. In this mode, items which are further away from our viewpoint appear reduced in size. This is how we see the real world. However, this is not always the best viewing method when modeling, so an alternative viewing mode is orthographic view. In this setup, objects remain the same size no matter how far they are from our viewpoint. The final process in our project is to render our scene. This gives us a still image of model and takes into account the textures, lighting, reflections and shadows, the usual aim being to create as realistic an image as possible. If our goal is to create a simple animation in which the objects in our scene move, we need to define the start and finish positions of each object, these are called keyframes, and Blender will calculate all the positions in between. For more complex movements, where part of a mesh is moving independently from other parts of the mesh, we need to add an armature. This acts like a skeleton with bones and joints. As we rotate joints in our armature, the associated parts of the mesh are also moved. Again, we need only define the start and end positions with Blender automatically calculating the frames needed in between. When creating an animation, Blender can produce either a series of stills, like the frames on a reel of vintage film, or a video file.